it's a name that's played many roles in our city. Bradley Academy has been a place for learning for presidents and the African American community in the 18 and 1900s. When the building's future was bleak, a community joined together to give it a new role as a museum where visitors are still learning at Bradley today. Bradley Academy's story began not long after Rutherford County was established. Well, Bradley Academy, the name is synonymous with education in Murfreesboro and Rutherford County. Uh, State Tennessee was formed in 1796. Rutherford County was formed in 1804. Murfreesboro wouldn't be around until 1811 for its founding. So Bradley actually started in 1809. Bradley's actually started uh, out what today would be out in the county in the frontiers of, of Rutherford County in Tennessee. But quickly, once Murfreesboro is established in 1811, the, the, the school moves and the name comes to Murfreesboro and they become linked at that point, early, early 1800 history for the city. Um, so during the 1800s, before the war, you have you know, a, a very elite, private, um, wealthy educational facility here. Not the only one in town, but one of the only ones in town. For that reason, you had people like James K. Pope that would come to Murfreesboro and go to school there. Or you would have uh, John Bell, who raced against Abraham Lincoln in the 1860 election, would come through Murfreesboro and go to school there for a little while and it's on this specific site here on South Academy Street uh, at least by 1830 if not before. And around 1830 they built a very nice brick structure here and that's the structure that lasted through the Civil War uh, up to 1917 when that building was demolished, raised to build this building in, in, which opened in 1918. Bradley would continue to serve as a place for learning until the mid-1800s. Following the devastation of the Civil War, it became abandoned but soon Bradley would take on a much more important role in our community. By the time of the Civil War, the, the building was abandoned, used as a hospital during the war, um, a place of residence for refugees, uh, mostly former slaves. What happens after the war is we actually pick up in the county records by 1867, 1868, the county sending people over here to take an assessment of the building to see how bad the building was, could it be reused. Um, the story goes a little gray between the late 60s, but definitely by 1884, the building's given to the African American community to be used for education of former slaves, obviously. And at that point, Bradley becomes synonymous with not only the history of education in Murfreesboro, but now the history of African Americans in Murfreesboro. And it becomes part of Murfreesboro's historic black community. For African Americans coming out of the Civil War, um, where everything's in disarray, they're trying to piece, figure out where they fit in the larger society and figure out their own society within that, that white realm. Um, so Bradley, school and churches become the foundations of African American communities um, outside of families. And so Bradley becomes very, very important. And it is from 1884 to 1955 um, like I said, that original Civil War era building is, is demolished in 1917 to make way for this building, a brand new educational facility for African Americans. It would have been very exciting for them at that time to have this, this modern building for, for black education. And when the school opens in 1918, um, it takes off. Uh, within less than a 10 years, you're going to have Holloway High School built separate from this building, a couple blocks away. And Holloway would become the black high school for Murfreesboro. Bradley would become the black elementary school for Murfreesboro. For students attending Bradley in the 1900s, the resources were scarce. Books often with missing pages were used by those attending the school. Teachers did not let that stop their commitment to providing a good education and an optimistic environment. In 1944, when I began first grade under Miss Sadie Jones, it was a happy, place to be and everybody was friendly, all the teachers were happy, all the kids was happy and one thing that we really liked about uh, Bradley was that it wasn't a bell in the school so Miss Lloyd had a thing called a little drummer boy. So when this little boy beat the drums in the morning it meant it was time for school to take in, it was time for recess and it was time for lunch. The teachers were in you would say willing to help the kids because when we were going to school, we used old books from the white kids and some of them didn't have pages in them. During the summer, the teachers would take those books and the pages where they were missing out of other books, make copies so all the children would have a book. You know, we would be on the same page. 
But it's still, they still were eager to learn. And by the time we left here, it was only first to fifth grade. And uh, all the teachers, it was two fifth grade classes and the fifth grade teacher, one of them was the principal, Miss Smith. And uh, it was just a happy place and it was the only place we had it. We learned to do uh, sports, which we had to play on the ground outside. We didn't have nothing, it wasn't any playground material, nothing but what the teachers brought for the kids to play with. But we had things, we learned to do plays, we learned to write poetry, we learned to sing songs with the music teacher, and uh, it was just a lot of fun. Every day you look forward to it. The Supreme Court decision Brown versus the Board of Education in 1954 eliminated segregation in our schools. A new Bradley Elementary was established soon after, and with it, the old school was once again left abandoned. It would take a number of years before Bradley's role became redefined. After this building closes in 1955 and the students are moved out to the new Bradley School and elsewhere, um, the building stays vacant. But for the next several decades, it's owned by the city and used by the city for various things. At times, they're using it for storage. Um, at times, they're using it, um, I think the maintenance department for the city used it as a workshop for a little while. Um, they tried some pilot education programs here, early ideas for magnet schools, uh, just one or two years, my understanding. The building was falling apart. It was something like a little eyesore because, you know, it was only maintenance. Uh, they was using the buses. The buses go down to the back. Uh, and it was a garage, so it was basically open to the back side of the building. And so by the time you get into the 1990s, the building is, is severely um, dilapidated. And it was at that point the city was deciding, uh, you know, what to do with the building. Is it time to, to, to take the building down? You know, it outlived its service, they thought, to definitely education, if not city needs. As a member of the original board, I was recruited in 1985 by Daddy Will, Willie McGowan, and other members of the uh, community. And Daddy Will, being the enterprising person that he has always been, sought out individuals as volunteers because this was a volunteer-driven initiative. But he needed individuals who could, who had a passion, first of all, for the quality educational experiences of the students who attended the school, but also understood that the project would take a significant period of time. They had an opportunity to pull the community together to support the idea of Bradley Academy being part of the community again. So the journey to establish Bradley Academy as a historical site began. McGowan's efforts were reinforced by the community that understood how important it would be to preserve the site. Neglect of the building over the years would not make the journey an easy one. I vividly recall walking through the building with uh, Daddy Will and Fred Benneby and other members of the board as we began to outline a plan for how we were going to uh, restore the building. There was this vision that was easy to follow because for the members of the board who actually attended Bradley Academy, they were committed to recreating the classrooms uh, in honor of Mrs. Myrtle Lord, the office space, the exhibit rooms. So there was a plan in their minds that we had to put to paper. Then we recruited resources throughout the community such as Shacklet's Photography, who had an archive of photographs for us. We recruited uh, the Rutherford County Archives Office who stored uh, memorabilia for that we wanted to recreate and to position into the facility. Um, we interviewed a lot of students who actually attended this facility and we hosted a multitude of events so that former teachers and former students could return 
and share with us all of the vivid, exciting memories of their educational experiences. They had to gut the whole building. We have pictures where they went all the way down to the foundation and then they had to come in. One thing that they did do and I really enjoyed, they saved the hardwood floors. The floors that we have were redone. They are the original floors that I went to school on. And the reason is because we had a soft spot at the front door and we didn't want to lose that wood at the front door. So they cut a place at the side and so we started using that side door. The people that come from out of town, you know, I say families that come home that never have seen it and went to school here, they can't believe, where'd you find the desk? Where did you find this? How did you all get this? The museum would open in the late 1990s, welcoming visitors from all over. School tours and former students amazed at how the school was renovated. In 2015, the city of Murfreesboro would step in to play a role in helping to preserve a site so rich in history. As a uh, department, we are very honored to have Bradley Museum as a part of our department. Uh, it's a very historical, uh, significant location in Murfreesboro, it's played a significant role uh, for a lot of uh, our citizens. We think that uh, going forward, uh, we'll be looking at how we actually deliver our services here at Bradley uh, for not only our citizens, but for our tourists as well. We think it's gonna be very important that uh, we develop a museum that uh, offers a variety of attractions things that will bring in the local community, things that uh, will attract people, new programs. But also, uh, it's very important that we preserve the heritage that is so significant to this building. So what is the legacy of Bradley Academy? It served as a school where leaders were made, as a centerpiece for citizens carving out their place in the community, and a home for so many wonderful stories. Bradley Academy is, in, is unique in that it offered at a time that this community was segregated, it offered an opportunity for African American students to receive a quality education. Although the books may not have been updated, but we had outstanding teachers who cared and helped us to gain access to current information and skills as well as the tools to be a part of a community unlike any other institution. I am excited that the city of Murfreesboro uh, partnered with the Parks and Recs have come in to do the day-to-day -day operation. I would still be here because I'm a volunteer. Uh, I tell them I don't get paid for my service. I just get enjoyment serving others. So just to tell the history of where it was before it was a museum to today, with all the improvements, I said we could go farther than where we are today. I'm excited because, for the simple reason that we uh, have somewhere that you can look back at your heritage and wonder, how did we come this far? The importance of Bradley, the, the legacy of Bradley Academy and now Bradley Academy Museum and Cultural Center, is it's, it's, the build, it's more than the building, it's more than the name, it's what it meant to people. Um, you know, we have this over 200 year history now going back to James K. Polk and John Bell and some of those famous our early national heroes and then after the Civil War we got this strong commitment to African-American education that lasts for 50 plus years and so today the legacies of Bradley are that we can still step into this building we can step back in time and learn so much from our history let alone a national history and teach that to the next generation of what life used to be like what segregation used to be like and how much we have moved forward um, so the legacy of Bradley is it's still here to educate.